Hey everyone, welcome to this webinar on creating and selling self-hosted courses. My name is Phil Ebner and I'm here with Matt Bernstein. We are so excited to have all of you here with us today and for anyone who is watching this um, in the future. Today, we're really going to walk through the process of what it takes to take your online courses, put them on a self-hosted site and create a system that works automatically and brings in extra income for you with your courses that you are creating right now or you've already created. And so we're gonna be walking through this presentation. It's going to take about 30, 30-ish minutes, we'll see. This is one of my first kind of webinars that I'm doing on like hosting with Matt. Well, it's our first webinar that we're hosting together. So bear with us if there's any technical difficulties or if we stumble. And yeah, we're going to get into it. But Matt, any initial thoughts for everyone? Welcome to the webinar. Yeah, I'm just pumped for everybody to be here. And I think that you guys are going to learn some stuff, especially if you're an online instructor and you don't have your own website set up. And then those who do have their own website set up, I think this information that we're about to give you in the next 30 minutes will definitely benefit you. So I'm really excited to have everybody on. I'm excited to be here with you, Phil. And uh, let's get to work. Do it. Okay, so let's make sure this presentation works. So before we start, we just wanna make sure that everyone who is here is in the right place because maybe you're in a different point in your online course creation process or your promotion process. But this presentation is really for people, if you're interested in teaching online courses, if you want to make consistent passive income each month, we've seen up and down months on Udemy, on other platforms. I've been around for a long time. I've seen platforms spring up like SkillFeed that were bringing in a consistent amount of revenue and then they disappear one month. So we want to make sure that we have consistent passive income each month. And so if that's something you're interested in, you're in the right place. You're in the right place if you are an online teacher that is struggling to make sales. So maybe your sales on Udemy aren't as high as you would like. This is what, what we're here to help you with. We're here to help you make more money with those same courses on your own site. And if you want to increase your income with your existing courses. So just taking your courses from Udemy, putting them on your own site and driving traffic to those courses and making more money. So what will you learn today? You're going to learn how to self-host your course. You're going to, to learn how to price your courses so that they sell and make you money. You're also going to learn how to write great email sequences and then how to build a sales funnel so that people get onto those email sequences and ultimately purchase your online courses. So email sales funnels that actually make sales. But first, before we get started, we got to give you a little bit of proof of success so that you know we're not just talking about this we're not just blabbing about this but this is what we're doing right now and we've had some success with it so let me just show you some of my earnings so far i haven't actually shared some of my udemy earnings um, in a while with the public i do share my income reports with people who are in some of my online teaching courses but today I've actually earned over $300,000 from Udemy. And you can see this graph here. Um, it's pretty incredible. It has changed my life. I got into teaching on Udemy in 2012 and I wouldn't be here today without Udemy talking about this. Um, since 2012, I've created over 50 courses. I kind of got addicted to creating courses. And for a while I was doing this while I was um, holding full-time jobs, probably like many of you, you have a full-time job, you're bouncing, doing this on the side in the evenings, on the weekends. And that's sort of how I started. And I just slowly built it up until it was, it surpassed the income that I was making full-time at my jobs. And it just made sense for me to focus all 40 work hours a week um, on teaching online courses. And you can see there, in November of this past year, December, January, I had some incredible months getting getting close to $40,000 in January, which was just amazing. And some of the things that I've done with this income have been paying off my student loans. I made a maybe irresponsible decision when I was 17 to go to a very expensive private school. And even though I took out, uh, I had scholarships for that school, I took out a lot of loans and I ended up with being over $100,000 in debt when I was 21 years old. And that's just 
absolutely absurd. And I didn't know what I was getting into. And I can only thank you to me and teaching online courses for allowing me to pay off that debt so quickly because right now I'm completely debt free. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, you can see also though that this graph shows the decrease in earnings from the past couple months. And that's something that everyone on Udemy is probably aware of since the pricing change, there has been a significant decrease in earnings. Last month was the first month that I had a sub $10,000 month uh, in about a year. So it doesn't worry me. And I don't want to make this about Udemy, uh, the issues with Udemy, because I still think Udemy is the place that you want to start out with, with teaching your online courses. But this definitely shows that having another source of income is a good idea because you can imagine, I mean, I'm obviously making a, enough money to, to survive. This is incredible. This is kind of stupid how much money I've been making on Udemy. But if this graph was lower and I was making about a couple thousand dollars per month and then all of a sudden it was 500 or just a few hundred dollars, I would want another stream of income um, that could help me pay the bills. And so that's why we're talking about self-hosting your courses. Of course, there's other things that this has allowed me to do, just going on vacations, getting married, paying for my wedding myself. Uh, my wife and I, we paid for our own wedding and we've been able to go on a couple trips. Um, basically, just having that extra money to be able to just take off for a couple weeks every year uh, from work, even if we have to take unpaid days from, from our job. So that's what this online income can bring to you. With Teachable, I started on Teachable a long time ago, but I didn't pay attention to it. I put up my courses probably in 2014-ish and nothing happened, but, and then I took them down because nothing was happening with them. But at the start of last, the, at the end of last year and really the start of this year, I started to focus on it a little bit better and create a system that works. And so I've seen it a dramatic increase in the amount of earnings I'm making each month. Here you can just see some of the earnings that I'm making on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a screenshot from April. So you can see 30 bucks here, 20 bucks here, 100 bucks here coming in every few days or so. And here, this is a screenshot of just the total earnings that I've had each month. And what excites me about this amount of earnings is that this is very similar to the amount of earnings I was making when I started out on Udemy. My first month, I earned $62 on Udemy. The next month was about 200. The following month was 300 or 400, then 500. It took me a while to get up to 1,000, but the graph of income that I've been able to make on with Teachable has been really exciting for me. And heck, 1,000 extra bucks in the month is definitely you know, bringing up that income that I've been losing because of the Udemy pricing changes. And over the course of the, year, of the year, that's going to be a huge, huge amount of money that I can use to save, invest, pay off debt and all kinds of things. So I'm really excited about Teachable and just self-hosting in general as a way to just buffer your, your income every month. And so you've been listening to me a lot. So I'm going to pass it over to Matt to just to talk a little bit about his story. So as you can see, two pretty different stories we got going on here. For me, I made $36,000 on Udemy last year and it allowed me to be able to do this full time and have an apartment in Boston. So I also have, this is my lifetime earnings. I've been on Udemy for a little over two years. I also opened up a Udemy business account. So I have two different Udemy accounts that earns me money. The other one my, for my skill hands business has around another $5,000, nothing worth showing. But Udemy last year, $36,000. And um, I mean, it's, we can, it's allowed me to live on my own, do this full time. And that's why it's also very important to have additional sales channels and additional income streams because $36,000 I could make that if I had a full time job somewhere else. But I'm also on Skillshare. I'm also on all of these other different revenue streams that we talk about throughout other content that I've made. And now I have skillhands.com, which I'm launching up. And as you can see here, my girlfriend and I, we do fun things like paint night. Uh, that's a picture of me in Venice. And that's a picture of my girlfriend and I at our friend's wedding. So it allows me to pay for these things and, and live the life that I want on my terms and just working hard and having fun. 
It's good. So you decided to create skill hands. So what was your reasoning behind that? Because I want to build my own business and I have goals of throughout my life of having this being the one and only thing that I do and building it to be $50 million, skillhands.com. And without a website, without a place to host all of my courses, I don't have a business. I just have content scattered around the internet on Udemy, Skillshare, amazing.com, all these other places, YouTube, all these other places. And basically when you have your main hub, when you have your own business website where you are in control, where you have direct communication over to your customers, you have a business. And then the rest of all the other additional sales channels that we're talking about is just icing on the cake. It's just extra for you. Exactly. And I, I completely agree. I think every instructor should have their own home base. And wh whether you're hosting your courses now or not, it's okay. I think it's a great thing to start doing. And that's why we're teaching you about it today. But at least having your own brand, having your own business as a, a hub is so important because it just helps you promote your courses, whether they're on your own course site or on Udemy or other places, you need a place where people can come through, a funnel that people can come through to get to your courses. So that is uh, that is so important. And with Skill Hands and my website, videoschoolonline.com, you can check them out and just see what we're doing. And that's one of the things, you know, we're gonna teach you some stuff today, but you can follow what we're doing by visiting our sites. Not only do we talk about um, our courses, and the topics of our courses, but both of us are sharing information about how we're creating online courses, how we're doing these self-hosting strategies, and you can follow us on our websites and our YouTube channels and everything like that. So how does self-hosting work? Let's talk about the basic process of how self-hosting a course works so that you are just a little bit more clear about what your goal is with self-hosting. So the basic is that you're going to put your online course on a beautiful self-hosted school using Teachable, Thinkific, or another platform. There's lots of other platforms. There's Zendler. There's all kinds. I, I can't even think. There's like new ones that pop up every single day. These are but, two of the best ones, though. Yeah, these are two of the best ones. And two of the ones that I would say have stood out to both of us since... Um, this whole model of self-hosting started. You can also create a WordPress site and do a custom plugin kind of deal where you create a, a membership site on your own site, website. But with Teachable and Thinkific, it's basically so easy just to upload your content, create your course courses, similar to how you would on Udemy, put it up there and you have a beautiful course site. You can connect it with your own blog. Um, and we're gonna talk about the a little bit about the differences between Teachable and Thinkific in a minute. Uh, but first, you have to get your courses up there somewhere. The next thing is how do we actually make sales with these courses? Because you can put your courses up there, but unless you're driving traffic to those courses and putting people through a sales funnel, you're not going to make any money from them. So the second step is to build out the sales funnel. And you'll you've probably heard that time, that word term self sales funnel a million times and it might be a little scary to you because you don't know well how do i start a sales funnel what should i put in my sales funnel do i need any special plugins or tools and the thing is that it can be very simple and we're going to show you the way that that makes it very simple for you to create a sales funnel because you can do it using whatever email tool you have and using marketing tools like youtube a blog or social media. So you have this sales funnel that's taking someone who visits your website, someone who visits your YouTube video through some this funnel with some different steps we're going to talk about and that gets them into the course. And then you have to drive people into that sales funnel and I talked about that with YouTube videos, a website with blog articles, social media. We'll talk about other ways to drive traffic into those funnels in a bit. So let's talk a little bit about Teachable versus Thinkific because this is a huge question that a lot of people is, it's probably the first question people have when they want to create a self-hosted site. Well, should I use Teachable or Thinkific? So Matt's going to walk through some of the differences uh, that we've found between the two. So 
pretty much I think that they're the same. Um, and Teachable, though, has a cheaper basic membership, monthly uh, membership. I think right now it's $29 as opposed to Thinkific has $49 if you want to do a paid hosting plan. And on Teachable and Thinkific, this would allow you to have your own domain. So for instance, courses.skillhance.com. You can't do this under the paid plan. But on Teachable, you can host unlimited courses, students, and have unlimited bandwidth for free membership. And most importantly, Phil likes the design of Teachable, and that's, I think, why he chose Teachable over Thinkific. And uh, it has Teachable has an engaged instructor Facebook community, and it's playing a little catch-up with Thinkific because Thinkific has been around for a little bit longer. It has immediate payout with any package. So Teachable, you have to wait uh, the same time period as Udemy. For sales that end in May, I think you have to wait until July to be paid for it. While well, Thinkific just is, has a normal Stripe payment processing, you'll have the money in your bank account in three to five business days. Um, it has a lower transaction fee for free membership than Teachable. Thinkific also has an engaged instructor community. And I like the design more. And I can't speak for uh, Phil's experience with Teachable tech support, but Thinkific is unbelievable. They're so professional and they answer uh, any of your questions very quickly, whether you have a free membership or paid. Uh, before we move on, Phil, can you uh, speak to... Yeah. Your yeah. I mean, I got on Teachable uh, because... It was really the first one that I had heard about. I saw a lot of other people starting to use Teachable to host their sites and think if it kind of came up on my radar a little bit after I started putting all my courses on Teachable. I've had a lot of success with Teachable in terms of the support. I love the Facebook group because you can post a question there and typically someone will respond whether it's another person using Teachable or someone from Teachable itself. But the, I think the main difference is that Teachable is playing a little bit of catch up with Thinkific. And we have these stats that I just, I was literally going on both sites. And I think that's what you should do too, is go on both sites. You can check out their pricing page and their options page and try to compare and see which is different because they're really almost identical platforms in terms of what you get for each sort of tier. They all have very similar things where you can charge however much you want. You can charge a subscription amount. You can charge, you can charge, do like a payment plan. Uh, so all the pricing things are similar. Um, and these are going to change over time. So when you watch this in the future for people watching, the, it might be a little bit different. Teachable might have even more features that Thinkific has now. But the one thing that I would do is go to each site and they have sample of other site of people who are using their Teachable or Thinkific to create their, their course site, check those out and just see what you like because that is really was the determining factor for me was just seeing Teachable, seeing the, the sites that people have built using Teachable. And I just really like sort of just the feel. There's, there's I think kinks in both. There's things that you're gonna have to figure out how to, how to work it out best for you. But I, I like Teachable and I, in the end, it really doesn't matter what you choose. I think it's more important to just find something that you'd like and do it. Just upload your, start uploading your courses because that's probably the hardest part for you to get started is just getting your courses up there. And if you have a course already that you've put on Udemy, you can just take that and put it on a Teachable site. You could sign up for a free account on Teachable or Thinkific and just do it right now. Do you have any other thoughts about that, Matt? Yeah, I, I think that that's you really hit it home. Just first, take a look at Teachable and Thinkific. Compare the side by side, what the features they offer, at what price. And I think most importantly, you can sign up for a free account with Teachable and Thinkific. Play around with the platforms, upload one course to each see which platform that you like the best. And then from there you can choose and pick which paid plan that you want to go with. But at the end of the day, they're mostly, they're pretty much the, 
the same. Like if I were to put a percentage, 70% the same, the two differences would be design and the, the price uh, for the basic membership would be different. Um, but it, it just comes down to your preferences. Yeah. I mean, it's different because I think Thinkific's prices, the last time I checked, which was just a couple of days ago, if you buy a year in advance, the price per month is, I think, the same as Teachable for the basic membership. But their premium membership, which has a little bit more features like having multiple authors on your courses and splitting revenue between authors automatically, their premium account is is cheaper than Teachable's premium account. So, you know, there's pros and cons to each. Check them out. But in the end, just pick something and start uploading your classes. You can always upgrade later on. So just start with a free package and start uploading. So let's start talk about pricing your courses because this is another thing that people will want to know how to do. Once you get your courses up there, you have to set up price. And so I'm just going to walk through different types of pricing models. And then we're going to talk about what each of us are doing and how it's working for us. So the first type of pricing is premium pricing for your courses. So I call this charging high. Some people might think that it's only thousands of dollars above, but I'm going to say a hundred dollars or above. I'm going to call premium pricing, uh, especially since the Udemy change in pricing, which I think has brought down the price of courses across the entire internet sphere of online courses. Anything really above $100 is going to take a lot more work to make that sale. There's a lot of people making a lot of money charging premium pricing for their products, but they have to back it up with amazing content. The course has to be amazing. Sometimes this means including other bonuses like group coaching, one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions to get people into that course having a private Facebook group or some sort of private member site where people can access you throughout, you know, having a group that they can talk to you throughout the week. And it's not just giving them video content and letting them go with it. And you really do have to have a solid sales funnel and marketing channel to get people to buy that high price ticket. This could include things like webinars and email sequences, just a very solid sales funnel um, that is a little bit more advanced than what either Matt or I are doing right now. But that being said, it works for, for some people. Um, I just heard about this guy who made $80,000 in a day because he had a great marketing funnel and he's charging a premium price for his, his product. So he made $80,000. That was Sean McCabe, I believe, made $80,000 in one day and it's possible. The next type of pricing is I'll call penetration pricing, pre bleh, tongue twister, penetration pricing. So this is where you're charging low, trying to get people into your courses and making the price not the determining factor whether they should buy your course or not. Make them it an easy decision for them to purchase your, your course. So charging between $10 and per course, you're charging what the market is selling at. And I'm saying the market is Udemy right now. And so you have to kind of match their prices. We've seen other platforms like this masterclass. I think it's masterclass.com where they have people like Kevin Spacey and uh, Serena Williams and famous people teaching courses and they're selling it for like 70 or, or 80 bucks. So it's like, if you're going to teach a course on how to act, you're not, and you're going to charge more than what Kevin Spacey is doing. I don't You're going to have to like, fly out to their place and hang out with them for a few months to make it worth it. So there's lots of people that are charging lower for their online courses. And so this is really pricing where you're, you're just competing with everyone else. Um, it's an easy purchase for people. You do have to provide solid course content uh, with all your courses. I think you have to provide good solid content, but you might not necessarily have to have the bonuses like, the group coaching or one-on-one -on -one time or a private Facebook group or anything like that. And it's just a lower key sales funnel. This is what I'm using right now. And I've just set up my sales funnels and they work automatically on their, on their own. And that's what you want a sales funnel to do, whether it's a higher priced option or a lower price course, you want it to work automatically, but it's just easier to make those sales at a lower price. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I saw with my pricing 
when I was charging higher and now that I'm charging lower just in a second. But the last option is a subscription model because both Teachable and Thinkific have the option to charge a monthly recurring fee to access either one of your courses or a bundle of your courses. So I would say charging low between nine and $49 is a good subscription price unless you have a bunch of other bonuses um, or you can command that price because of your expertise and your, your reputation. Uh, but it has to make more sense than buying individual, co individual courses because if you're charging five bucks per course or 10 bucks a course, and then you're charging $20 for the subscription model, people are gonna see that and think, well, I can just buy the course and never have to pay again for, for it. So you have to make sure that the course, is, the course itself or the bundle of courses is a really good deal to get people into that subscription and to keep people there. And that might mean adding new content every month, adding new courses to your bundles to make sure that people wanna stay in it month after month. Uh, the thing about subscription models is that it's a little bit more predictable and as I've started to use subscription models for my own courses, it's amazing to see that I have, you know, 50 people in the subscription now, and I can basically count on that amount of money minus a few people who tend to drop off every month, but I can count on that every month. So let me just make sure. And you can keep, okay. you can keep count your churn rate when people drop off. So then it still becomes predictable if you keep it under 5% of people dropping off and then you add whatever percentage it still becomes predictable so it's cool yeah definitely and what i found that i've heard a lot of people say oh people get off subscriptions tend to be about three months five months six months i've heard lots of numbers uh, but for me i've had a lot of people who have stayed on my subscription since the beginning so i haven't had years of experience with it yet but it seems like a lot of people are staying on so before I talk more about my pricing, Matt, talk to us about what your pricing strategy is with your courses on Skillhance. Basically, taking Phil's uh, concepts that he just taught you, following some of Udemy prices. I So Udemy has $20 to $50 pricing. I chose to make Skillhance unique, and I'm trying to get people on Skillhance. So I chose to price it individual courses at $15. This allows me to now bundle, let's say four courses together. So I have a bundle that's called start a successful side business. And that has four courses in there and I can charge $29 for that bundle. So now that if a student wants multiple courses of mine, they could save money by buying the bundle. And I have a monthly subscription where I plan to upload two new courses per month. I plan to have a community where the people have uh, members that can have like, uh, can, they can talk to each other in this forum and then add value that way. And I'm gonna charge $10 a month for that. And I think that pricing, it kind of depends on what your goals are because you need to know that your target audience. So I'm going after people who have full-time jobs, that need more money and will look to the internet to get that money. And it has a low affordable cost throughout the whole process because it's people who don't have any money and need more money. So I'm not expecting people to pay me hundreds of, hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars for my content and I don't want them to. So I'm going with um, these prices because I can get thousands of people enrolled in my courses on Skillhance in the future. Great. Yeah. And I think I agree with all of that. I think for when I started out with my courses on Teachable a long time ago, I had matched my prices on Udemy, which at the time were exorbitant. My courses were priced $99, $199, $299. And I, literally made no just organic sales from those courses being on my site. And I wasn't doing much promotion. I just had a link from my main site to my course site and people would go there, but I never made sales. But after Udemy made their pricing change, I lowered all my prices on my Teachable site and automatically without any promotion, I started to get more sales. Now, part of that reason is because I have traffic going there. I have over... 
about 20,000 visitors per month on videoschoolonline.com now. And that's just from blogging weekly for about three years now, three or four years now. So it was very slow, regular growth. But as soon as I changed the prices, I started to see more and more organic sales. And so I can thank Udemy for that. It was a pick in the butt to lower my prices. And honestly, I think that's what my courses are worth. Yeah, I think there are some of my courses that are worth more. Um, they, you know, I have 12 hour courses and 15 hour courses that took a long time to create. But at this point, I've made back my money on those courses that for the time I spent creating them. And so making 25, 50 bucks for those courses for every time someone purchases them, I'm happy with that. And in terms of a subscription model, I'm doing that too. I've bundled my courses according to their theme. And I've created a subscription for each bundle. And that's something that you might have an issue with yourself is you have all types of courses. You might not be in one niche. And that's how I was. I had photography courses. I had business courses. I had video creation courses. And I didn't want to just put all of them into one subscription bundle because I couldn't market to a specific audience. So now I have a photography course bundle. I have a video creation course bundle and I have a business building bundle. And I'm able to target those bundles to specific people using YouTube videos, using my articles, using my email sequences. And I've had a lot more success with those bundles. Um, about every month or so, I get a few new subscribers since I started those bundles. People, I see a couple of people asking about just different pricing methods to get people into your courses. One thing that Teachable does, and I believe Thinkific has as well, is you can give out a discount for the first month of a subscription up to 100%. So I can give out a free month of these bundles. And that's what I do. That's one of my main lead generators. My main uh, lead magnets is you get a free month of all of my courses on my site. And so I get a lot of people in there and I have a lot of people staying from there. So for me, the lower prices, the penetration pricing between 10 and $100 works. All of my courses are about 20 to $30 right now uh, individually. And then I'm charging $9 per month for my subscription rate. So we'll get to any questions if you have more questions about pricing later on, but we're going to move on to email sequences because once you have your, your site up your, with your courses, you set your prices. I think the next thing to do is write out all your email sequences so that later on when we talk about sales funnels, you got to have the, your email sequence set up before you get people through that sales funnel because the sequence is part of that sales funnel. So why do we love email sequences? Email is personal, targeted, and purposeful. It's personal because you have that direct connection to that person. You're with them when they wake up in the morning and they read over for their phone, they check, turn off their alarm, and then they open the Gmail app. That's basically what I do every morning. And I think a lot of you do that too. I think a lot of people do that, check their email first thing in the morning. Even with social media, even with all these other forms of communication, a lot of people use email still. It's also targeted. You can target a specific person because you can have different lists of people. You can have a list of photographers. You can have a list of business creators. Whoever your courses target, you can create lists with that type of person that you can target your courses to. And it's just purposeful. It's not like social media where you are just sending out a blast into the internet space and once people scroll by that or once a hundred other people post something, your message is gone. Your email is purposeful. You have to send it with a purpose and it's a, that direct connection to the person. So that's why we love emails that, uh, that's why we love email marketing. To have success with email marketing, you have to write emails that educate and inspire. So we can't just promote, 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 promote. We have to make sure that in our email sequences, we are providing high quality content and inspirational content so that people want to stay on our email list. And so that at the end of the email sequence, people want to take the next step with that relationship you've built with that person and purchase that course or take that next step for whatever you're offering them. So I'm going to just walk you through a basic email sequence template that's working for me right now. 
I've set these up for different courses. So at the start, a person will get into this email sequence via a lead magnet. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a, in a second, but basically they come to my website on a specific page. They opt in on a specific form or they sign up for a specific class and they get onto this specific email sequence that sells a specific course to them. It's not general. It's very specific for a course. So the first message you want to send out is your welcome message. So welcome someone on board to your email sequence. Make sure that they want to be a part of it. Usually this is your double opt-in option where someone actually has to receive an email and opt into your sequence to make sure that they continue getting your emails. And then the next couple emails are educational. You don't want your first email to be, hey, I'm selling something to you. You want to make sure that you educate. So teach them something about what they signed up for your course, your sequence about. For example, I have sequences that start when someone signs up for my free YouTube course. In my first couple educational emails, I'll give them tips. I'll give them advice about how to improve their YouTube channels. And it's not about selling it, it's about educating. The second or third email is to educate and introduce the product. So again, this is still educational. You're still teaching, you're not trying to sell, but maybe it's just mentioning that you have a course on this topic. So for example, one of these emails for me would be in my YouTube course sequence would be writing a, a tip or a trick that is part of the course and giving them real actionable advice, but then at the end of the message saying something like, and this was a great tip from my YouTube masterclass. You can check it out here. Not a hard sell, just an introduction. The next is a soft sell and or what I call an inspirational message. So it's educational in the sense that you're not just selling, you're trying to inspire someone. Usually if this is something, um, I'm trying to think of an example for, for, let's just say the YouTube class because I'm on that train of thought. But in that sequence of YouTube emails, I'll write an email about someone's inspirational story about how they are using YouTube to have success in their life. And by doing that, you are showing them what the possibilities are by using YouTube, by implementing what you're teaching about with this email sequence. And this is a soft sell. So you can say at the end of this message, something like, and if you want to learn how this person did that, how this person changed their life with YouTube, you can check out my course on that. It's only 25 bucks on my site. Very soft sale. You're trying to inspire someone to understand that if they do gain those, those, those skills from your online course, then they can achieve the same results that you talked about in that inspirational message. We want to back up with our next email and do another educational. You, they've kind of got this sense that, okay, you got this product. We know you have this product. If they are really amped, they're going to purchase that product after those first couple messages, but you don't want to hard sell yet. You want to back up, do a little bit more educating. So make sure that they know they want to be on this sequence. So just another educational message that helps them with something, something. And then finally, it's your hard sell. And this is similar to your promotional messages that you might use on Udemy. But this is the message where you talk about the course, you talk about the benefits of the course, and you include a price. You could include a discount if you want. This is where you just try to sell your course. You're not trying to educate here. You have one call to action to get that person to buy that course. So in general, you can kind of format your sequences however you want, but it's educate, educate, introduce your, your, your product, educate, sell. That's the sequence that you should follow. And the last thing is just about emailing. Quick tips is you want your emails to be simple and friendly. I think emails do better when they're personal, not when it just sounds like you're a business, but when you include some personality in them. You don't want them to be distracting. I've been using ConvertKit to do my email marketing and they pride themselves on having very simple email templates. It's usually just text-based. You can add images if you want. And they found that those types of emails convert better. You don't want people to be distracted by 
either a bunch of images or some sort of template that you've, you've used or by a bunch of links. And that's why you want all of your emails to have a single call to action. So you don't want to have an email that's, hey, check out my Facebook page. By the way, I have this course, check out this course. Oh, and then here's another YouTube video that might, be, might interest you. You want to make sure that every email has one call to action, whether it's to get someone onto your YouTube channel to watch a video, to get someone on your blog, or to sell that course. So a single call to action, a single link in every email will work better. So that was a lot about emails. Matt, do you have any other advice, tips, tricks for using email the right way? Yeah, I just love when you, uh, the, the process that you go through. So I think basically the only thing that I would add would be uh, an example of what I do when somebody uh, subscribes to one of my free courses, like let's just say the selling on eBay course. So they'll give me their name, their email address, and they get a, f a free selling on eBay course. And I give them a welcome email. And in this instance, I'm saying like, hey, like thank you so much for subscribing. Like we're so excited to have you on. Uh, skill hands. I uh, I explain what skill hands is. So we help hardworking people like you create a successful side business. And then on the last sentence, you would motivate them in some way to continue with the course that they just subscribe to. And then in their educational email, I would list three tips that would get them uh, started off so that they can continue with the course and be successful with it. And then in my second educational email, I would give them three more tips. And, and then I would go with the soft sell like Phil did. So I, I, Phil once told me that right off the bat, like adding quick tips to success will get your student more engaged and more motivated uh, to be successful in what you're teaching them. Great, yeah, uh, I think that's all good. How's everyone doing? Is everyone still there? What? Just chat in the chat box. Let us know if you're still awake, if this is good for you guys. I see a couple of questions about price, asking about pricing. We did just talk about pricing about 10 minutes ago. We can answer questions about pricing during the Q&A, which is gonna come up. I know our presentation is going a little bit longer than I thought, but we got about 10 more minutes of presentation. Then we're going to do the Q&A. Uh, but we got Rick, who's still awake. We got, um, I don't know your name, but Coco, Internomad, you're, you're here, you're awake. Andy is awake. Um, we got Frenchie, who's awake. Great, awesome. Lynn, you're awake. We got lots of people who are awake still. So if you want, you can chat in the, the uh, chat box. What email service are you guys using? I'm just curious to know what email tools you're using. There's Aweber, there's MailChimp. There's free ones, plugins like MailPoet for WordPress users. I'm using ConvertKit. I just posted the link to my to ConvertKit above in the chat. It's my affiliate link if you do want to go through it. Um, and I think, Matt, you're using MailChimp, right? MailChimp and how my, uh, my girlfriend actually like does email marketing for a living. She codes and designs emails for a company. And... So what I'm using MailChimp for is that I have a list for people who buy courses, people who buy course bundles, a list for my premium uh, monthly subscription membership, and another general email. And then if I wanna segment a specific audience, then what I do is Thinkific actually allows you to segment your audience and then email them right from Thinkific. And I can do uh, people who've enrolled in a free trial of my selling on Amazon course. So what I do is I have a free trial where they can view the first 10% of my course and they have to give me their name and email address. And then later, once I've seen that they've actually watched any of the 10%, I can go in, segment that audience and then email them, um, you know, things that we just learned about in the email sequence. So yeah, that's, that's what I do. That's perfect. We got um, someone asking Joe if he, he wants to date an email marketing expert. So maybe your girlfriend has some friends that you could <laughs> uh, 
hook up Joe with. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, the email tools, they are amazing. I switched over to C ConvertKit at the end of last year, at the start of this year. And it was really another kick in the butt just to make sure I have my email sequences written out. And ConvertKit works really well with Teachable. I think you can use AWeb or MailChimp similarly, but with ConvertKit, you can hook it up with Teachable so that when someone signs up for a free course or any course, you can add them automatically to an email sequence. You can automatically segment them into a certain group. You can tag them as a certain type of person. So that's what I do. I have my anybody that signs up for my free personal finance course or my free photography course, they automatically get into one of these email sequences. And so this is all part of the sales funnel, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Uh, but we're kind of going about it the roundabout way, talking about email, the email sequence first, because I think it's really the first thing that you have to do this. We're giving you the steps that you need to do first. You got to get your courses up. You got to price your courses. You got to write your email sequences. And last is set up the entire funnel, make sure everything's connected. So before we get to any more questions, we got to talk about sales funnels really quick. So Matt's just going to give you an overview of what a sales funnel actually is and an example of how it works. Okay, so basically you, so let's just assume nobody knows who you are right now. Or this potential student doesn't know anything about you. First, you need to get them aware of your business, your website and what you do. And I'll give an example of this after. And then after you make them aware of your business skill hands, let's say, you need to get them interested in the information that you're providing them. Then you need to basically propose to them in the way that you need to get them invested in what you're selling to them. This basically, like we were talking about earlier, it's, it's if you were to get into a relationship with them, you can't just introduce yourself and then propose the next day. It needs to be nice and slow. You need to get to know each other. They need to get to know you most importantly. And then the sale, you can, they'll buy a product from you. So for instance, awareness, you post a five YouTube videos onto YouTube and somebody views it. Now they're aware of at least if you say, hi, I'm Matt Bernstein from skillhands.com in the beginning of every video, they're aware of who you are and what your company is. And then they can watch the video and see if they like what you're doing. So if they like what you're doing, they're interested in it and maybe they view even more videos that you have posted onto your YouTube channel. That's why it's important to have playlists so that they can view multiple videos at a time. And if they're interested in it, then you can also have a YouTube card or YouTube annotations that basically say, unlock the full course here and they can click on it. And this is the proposal because if they're interested in what you're saying and they want to take the full course that's fully organized, they have access to you, they can email you and ask you questions. Then if they like, then they land on your course landing page on your website and basically they can look, this is your proposal written down on all on one page. It's you're adding in the unique selling proposition, why they should buy this course for $10 and then you make the sale. So first, it would basically be a front end offer. And then we go into you making a front end offer, which is the pricing structure that we were talking about before. It could be anywhere between 10 to $20. It's a small amount that people won't mind parting with. And especially if you offer a 30 day money back guarantee, they really can't lose on doing this. And yeah, that's basically the, yep. the start of the sales funnel. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, no, that was perfect. And so just to kind of recap, what a sales funnel is and what it looks like for an online instructor is you get traffic to your content. So this is on YouTube, your website, you have that traffic. And so for me, this is an image of my blog on videoschoolonline.com. You can click on the blog and these are just articles that I've written and every article is related to one of my courses. And if it's not directly related, I connect it with a course. So documentary editing, I don't have a documentary editing course, but I have a course on how to edit with Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'll have a link to that course or a free opt-in related to that course 
on that blog article. I've released courses about personal finance, email marketing, and ConvertKit recently. So those also have uh, opt-ins related to those kinds of courses. So that's my blog. That's an, an example of that content. Then you have your lead magnet with the opt-in. And so here's an example on that email marketing article, which is an article I wrote for course creators like you and me, how to do email marketing. If people want to download the PDF version of that article, you can sign up right there with that little opt-in box. And this was created with ConvertKit. ConvertKit makes it very easy to send people PDFs with an opt-in. And it's crazy how many people will sign up for your email list just to get a PDF version. Even though it's the same exact content that's on the blog, they just want to download it and people will sign up. And that's just an example of a specific opt-in opt -in that gets people on a specific list into a specific segment or onto a specific email sequence because you don't necessarily want to just have one opt-in for your course and put it on every art blog article. You'll have more success like Matt talked about before, segmenting your audience and creating different opt-ins for different types of people, different audiences. Then you have your email sequence. So you get the traffic, they get in, into your, they see the lead magnet, they opt in to get that lead magnet, and then they get put on an email sequence. We talked all about that. Here are some of the examples of email sequences that I have created recently. And this is again on ConvertKit. But you can see the open rates and the click rates for the subscribers very very high and they're high because we're focused specifically for them this isn't just a general email sequence this is a sequence created for kinetic typography users for photographers for people interested in teaching online courses and all of these people get onto these different sequences by signing up for a free course related to that topic and that's how i'm getting a lot of people onto these sequences is by putting out free courses and then upselling the paid course later on in the in the funnel which is the last thing the sale and the follow-up because you want to make sure that you follow up after you make the sale to make sure they're happy and to potentially sell more products or services to that person later on make sure that you maintain that relationship if we go back to this whole person relationship analogy after you propose you know, or after you get married you make that sale you don't stop paying attention to your, your significant other you gotta continue to woo and to wed her and go or him and go on dates with them and and everything to make sure that that relationship is there or it's going to end and you're gonna have to divorce that person who signed up for your email list and to reassure them that they didn't just make a mistake. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So how do we drive traffic into sales funnels? Uh, because you can set all this up, but how do we get people into those sales funnels? There's lots of ways. Uh, here are some of our favorites. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube is probably the first place I would start. Just creating YouTube videos, taking content that you've already created, put them on YouTube. People are searching on YouTube for content. People are searching on Google and they find your content on YouTube. You have your articles, talked about that before. So articles, you can also just take your YouTube videos, write articles about them, put them on your blog. It's funny how some of my articles that I've written get popular, some don't, but I have like specific articles about green screen editing that get a bulk of my website views and traffic every month. I get thousands of people visiting that one article because it's highly ranked in Google. And so you want to make sure that on that page are is some sort of opt-in related to those visitors. Webinars. Matt and I both do an online show using Blab. Matt has the online show with Dennis Smith, which is every Thursday. I have my show with David Espino, the passive income show. And we both talk about similar stuff, teaching online courses, but it drives a lot of traffic to um, we have a lot of traffic going to those webinars and those live blabs, and we can try to drive that traffic to our websites, to specific courses. Um, so using a tool like Blab, Google Hangouts to do webinars is a great way to drive more traffic to those funnels. Podcasts, you can take those live shows, turn them into podcasts. You can create a podcast of your own. Doing interviews is a great way to increase 
uh, your viewership and get more people who you didn't know, who weren't aware of you onto your sequences or aware of you, that first part of that, that sales funnel, because interviewing people who have their own audience, you bring that audience into your own awareness who might potentially get interested and then follow into that sales funnel. And then social media, the last one, and probably the one that I don't pay attention to the most because I feel like the return on my investment with social media isn't as high as YouTube videos, blog articles, my webinars. I've dabbled with podcasts. I don't have a podcast right now, but it's something I'm interested in doing. But just being on social media and having that presence, I still get hundreds of people clicking on my website from my Twitter channel, my Facebook channel, I know people who are having a lot of success now with Instagram. So that those are just a bunch of different ways to get people onto your site. Matt, do you have any tips or advice for driving traffic into funnels? So basically all those tips were great. You have to do it consistently. I think Phil attributes a lot of his YouTube subscriber counts and visitor, I mean, views on YouTube because of the fact that he posts consistently. So with me, I'm pumping out a ton of content so I can consistently post to my blog every single day, to post to YouTube every single day, Facebook, and embedding the video onto Facebook, not just using a YouTube link. And I think all, some of the ways that aren't weren't mentioned, uh, how do you social media? One of the great ways is, for instance, by selling on eBay courses. I have plenty of lectures, videos that truly add value and don't promote anything. So yeah. yesterday, what I did was I went into 10 different eBay groups. I hadn't talked to anybody ever in these groups. Keep, keep in mind, because if you're involved, if, if you're legitimately involved in these groups and they see you as a little bit of an influencer in these groups, then that's way more powerful than what I did. But what I did was post a video in there and it was like a five minute video and I truly added value to those people. And I got 150 likes in total in those 10 groups. I got more Facebook likes with on my page, on Skillhand's page. I got into a, a lot of conversations with people, good conversations and there's a quote I forget by Jim Rohn. He says, if you want to sell, you need to talk to people and listen to people. And the good news is that there's plenty of people that you can talk to and listen to. So one of the ways that I was doing that was by going into these groups and, and adding value. And if I do it consistently, if I take out 30 minutes in my day, go to these relevant Facebook groups, look at the comments, look at the, and respond to them, have a few comments and posts of my own and then I can and then people will see that and find out that I know what I'm talking about and they'll look into it they can just like yesterday they clicked on my Facebook page I have it visible to everybody on Facebook and then they'll see Matt Bernstein founder of Skillhance they click on Skillhance and they see my Facebook page and then they'll like it so just 30, 30 minutes of my time I got 10 new Facebook likes I didn't see how many new, like, you know, it's just you're planting seeds for the future. And if you keep doing this consistently, it's going to be powerful. Totally. And all that work that you're putting in right now to create those videos is it's going to be up there for a long time. And that's the beauty of this system is that, yeah, it's a lot of work at fr up front. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, this is super easy to do. It's a lot of work, not only to create the course, which a lot of you are in the process of creating your first course. Maybe you do have courses already. That's a lot of work on its own. And so after that, there's a lot of work of putting together your email sequence, making sure that you have that sales funnel and you have the content up there, the YouTube videos, the articles up there. It's a lot of work. That being said, it's up there. And now, what, now that I have my sequences set up, I have my YouTube videos set up, I have my blog articles, my courses, everything is set up. So now when people are searching for different topics on YouTube, they might land on my YouTube video and it's all set up so they can automatically go to my website, they can automatically opt in, they can automatically get in my email sequence and they can automatically get that education and then I make that proposal to them to make 
to purchase the paid course, the premium course related to them, and it's all automatic from now on. There's the the once you get this system all set up, all you have to do is create more content and drive more traffic to into those funnels. But the funnel is all all automated, and that's the beauty of this. So I want to allow everyone just to do a little bit of self promotion really quick because I'm interested to see where are people home sites if you have a website please post it in the chat right now i'm just interested to see what your site is other people can then go to your website check it out if you don't have a website pick one place that we can we can you can send people whether it's your udemy ch profile your youtube channel anywhere just post it in the channel right now in the chat right now so we can all see all of your amazing work and get inspired by you because a lot of you already have you know your website content maybe you don't have parts of the system set up but yeah so go ahead and post your links there and everyone can check you out so i hope this all makes sense to you this whole sequence this whole system that we've set up for selling our self-hosted courses we're gonna have some q a in just a minute but remember you just build your online course platform you create that sales funnel with the email sequence and then you drive traffic into your sales funnel. That's really the basis of this. It's pretty simple. Um, once you start and you start, once you understand this, it's pretty simple. Now it's just time to take action and to do it yourself. So you've seen how this strategy works for Matt and I. We're making income on our own sites, hundreds of dollars every month with our self-hosted courses basically because we have these these sales funnels set up now before i didn't i didn't have sales funnels i didn't have email sequences and i wasn't making any money but after i've set up these funnels started to make more money and this is something that you probably want to do right now you want to replicate it yourself i know if i was in your shoes i'd probably be sitting there oh like i got to get on this i got to get on this and so this is totally able to be done on your own it's what matt it's what i did on our own we figured this out on our own did it all ourselves using what we taught to you today you can go off create your sales funnels create your email sequences and do it all on your own but if you need a little bit more help if this training was a good tease if you're interested in what we're talking about we actually have a course that we created about this and so we created this course, Create and Sell Online Courses with Teachable and Thinkific to help you if you just need a little bit more hand-holding. And there's a ton of content in this course. It's nine hours of lectures. Within this, you, we've taught you a lot that's in the start of this course. You've already learned a little bit of what this course is all about. But we, we expand on it a lot in the course. We have case studies. Lots more examples. We'll give you the one-on-one -on -one support if you need it, if you enroll in the class. And you can enroll at the link videoschoolonline.com slash self-host now. It will take you actually to a Udemy course. So this isn't a self-hosted course yet, but it's on Udemy and you can enroll now. And so I just have one more quote from Jim Rohn who says, you cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. And I just thought this was perfect for just this point in maybe your life and it was perfect for my the point in my life back in January where I decided that I want to have this self-hosted platform where I am making consistent consistent income so you can do this I believe you it starts now you're not going to be making thousands or hundreds tomorrow but if you start you're going to change that direction and get to that place in the future and you have that chance to write your own path and so the course special super duper neat deal for all of you who are watching the webinar right now it's only ten dollars it's pretty crazy i mean we could have charged way more than that just for the content that we provided in this webinar but we just want to be super nice to all of you we are going to post the link in and we'll pin it in just a second to the uh, to the blab so you can click on it but just videoschoolonline.com slash self host now it's going to be ten dollars and after this webinar the price is going to increase so we're just going to post this webinar let a few people watch it on a replay today but afterwards it's going the price is going to go up and we're not going to charge ten dollars for this course anymore so 
um, enroll now if you're interested. Matt, can you just talk a little bit more about what the course is? I mean, we walk through all the steps. We walk through Teachable. We have a complete section on Teachable, Thinkific, where we walk you through how to create your course, how to set everything up so that it's completely clear to you. What else is in this course for, for everyone? Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's just like a step-by-step -step guide that you can create your own website, uh, self-hosted website with Teachable, with Thinkific. Uh, for my, my stuff, it teaches you exactly how, uh, what the design looks like and then how to design it exactly how I have. And I actually, if you go to skillhands.com as well, you could see how that's designed and how I use Optimize Press to design that. And it's just, it's like all the information that you need to choose either Teachable or Thinkific. And once you've done that, then Phil and I will give you a step-by-step -step guide in order for you to get your self-hosted course website up and running. Then it shows you how to price your course dive deeper into the stuff that we talked about today creating your email sequence we have 11 lectures exactly how to make your email sequence so we'll dive deeper into that too how to create and drive traffic into your sales funnel there's another 10 lectures on that one so again diving diving deeper into the stuff that we talked about today uh, building a wordpress website to incorporate it with your self-hosted courses it's uh on Thinkific, you can't have your own blog, so I teach you how to use WordPress in order to do that. Teachable, you can have your own blog. Phil actually uses WordPress to do that too, so I will dive deeper into that. YouTube marketing strategies, there's six lectures on that. Google Plus, uh, there was a there was a rumor that Google Plus was disappearing, but it's it's alive and well, and it's not going anywhere. And I mean, it's Google, it's, it's part of the biggest search engine. So when you get more um, people in your circles, when you join more Google Plus communities, get involved in those, that's a great way to drive traffic into it. Using live streaming like Blab, like Facebook Live. Uh, Periscope, I don't know if that's gonna exist for very much longer because I wouldn't even use Periscope because the videos disappear every 24 hours. So Facebook Live, at least you have the videos there. Blab, you have the videos there. Blogging strategies. Uh, we're diving deep into this course. It's a nine-hour course. Podcasts, how to interview strategies, customer and student engagement. You want to keep your students engaged in your business because if you have 5,000 true fans, you can make a living just by doing that. It's easier and more beneficial to you and your students to keep them more engaged instead of just getting new customers. It's much harder to get new new people. Uh, closing the sales funnel, branding your business, and concluding, and you have access to unlimited email support with Phil and I. So that's where the that's where all the a lot of value there. I wasn't expecting to be talking that long on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty epic. I want to thank John, Andy, um, for signing up already. We got people already signing up for the course. Carol, thank you for signing up. We got um, on-demand language, whoever that is. For sign thank you for signing up. We really appreciate it. I mean, there's much more than $10 worth of content in that course, uh, like Matt is talking about. We kind of break down all the different types of uh, lead generating traffic and give you tips on that. So uh, check out the course. For now, though, let's uh, get to Q&A. I know people have been posting a ton of, of questions throughout. If you can, just if we didn't answer specific questions, post your questions again right now so we can just see them more easily and we'll get to your questions. So uh, thank you all for being here and we'll do about 10, 15 minutes of Q&A and then we'll let you guys all go and start creating your online courses, your self-hosted sites. Um, so we had a, one question about, can you speak about the value of blogging on a teachable site? I want to have one main site, not not many with too many different purposes. So that is a great option that Teachable has to blog on their site. And the cool thing about Teachable is if you don't have a website already, you can just use Teachable to create your website, to create your home for everything, for your courses, 
and for your blog. And so you wouldn't need to have a WordPress site. You wouldn't need to have a Tumblr, another site with a blog. And so I would suggest if you're just starting out, try that first, unless you have this, uh, yeah. If you wanna keep it simple, use Teachable, blog on Teachable. Um, you can create your own, use your own URL with Teachable if you purchase the basic patch package. Um, and, and yeah, so I think the value of blogging on Teachable is great. I wouldn't have a blog on Teachable and your own site because it'll just be a little bit too confusing and you want all your traffic going to one blog article to get that good SEO traffic and the SEO juice on Google. Uh, so for example, you can look at my website, videoschoolonline.com and you can see that I've tried to mimic the style of Teachable with my videoschoolonline.com. Um, design. I'm using a theme called Avada for WordPress, but I have similar links at the top. So when you click on any of the buttons, if you go to the courses tab, which is actually the, the teachable site, it still looks very similar. So the, the experience is fluid, as fluid as possible between my video school online WordPress site and my teachable site. Uh, the blog though is hosted with WordPress. So hopefully that answered your question. Uh, we have another question. What is the most important consideration for you when you're choosing a learning teaching platform? So I think this is about choosing Thinkific versus Teachable. Matt, do you have any kind of overall thoughts about that? Yeah, I think, I think basically it comes down to doing a side-by-side -side of all their features and how much Thinkific and Teachable charge for those plans. And then going even further into that, signing up for both free plans and then try designing the Teachable website, try designing your Thinkific website, try posting your video courses onto there and see which uh, self-hosted platform that you like the best because it the prices aren't that much different. The features aren't that much different. Both support systems are great. It just comes down to the design is a little different and then the basic plan for Teachable is a little bit less. So, I mean, Phil went Phil went to Teachable. I went to Thinkific. We're both successful. It just, as long as the platforms do what you want it to do, you can be successful. There's multiple ways to be successful, so. Yeah, and just pl play around with it. Andy just popped up a question about testing it before going live. You can go in, you can test, see the admin dashboard. If you're in the course, you can see it because we have sections and lessons on all that. And I just want to thank Lynn, Frenchie, Verdaluz for signing up. A few more people signing up for the course right now. So we really appreciate that. Ellis, thank you for signing up as well. Um, but yeah, just play around, sign up for the free account, see what you like better because the back end is a little bit different. The way you create courses is a little bit different, uh, but just play around and test it. That's, that's what I would say it's because you can sign up for free. Uh, we have a question uh, from Liz. Thank you, Liz, about ConvertKit and how it links seamlessly to Teachable, i.e. use the two-step opt-in and then people are signed up for the Teachable course. So the way that I'm using ConvertKit and Teachable is within ConvertKit, when you sign up for ConvertKit, you can hook up, and I'm just gonna open up my ConvertKit account so I can see how it works specifically. So this is, this is probably how it works similar to, to how it works with MailChimp, but for ConvertKit specifically, when you create a new sequence, for example, and you're creating the automation, which is basically a rule that says, if customer A signs up for course A, then they get signed up for email sequence A. And so you can actually add that rule as an automatic trigger. So when the triggering event is when someone signs up for a free course or a paid course hosted with Teachable, it's that shows up as an option in ConvertKit. And so that's how it works together. You, you literally go on ConvertKit, you sign up or you create that trigger. And from the drop down menu of purchasing a product, you can choose a, that specific course. Um, so, and then you can, because they 
are a part of that course, you can do all sorts of things. You can add them to an email sequence. You can tag them as a specific group. You can even subscribe them to a different form. You can, you can say like, for example, if someone purchases the paid course, you can unsubscribe them from the sequence, the free course sequence, because you don't want to be sending out promo messages to someone who's already in the course in the paid course. So once someone purchases the paid course, you can unsubscribe them to the free course. So that is, um, that's how it's kind of seamlessly works together. Um, yeah, you, there's different things. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any, if you have any other questions about that, but, um, Hopefully that was a good explanation for you. I I also I also want I also forgot to mention this whole time that if uh, it doesn't really matter to Phil and I which course in which platform we sign up for Th Thinkific or Teachable, but Teachable I mean Thinkific gives me the opportunity to give you a fifty dollar credit towards a paid plan, and then I would get fifty dollar credit towards my paid plan, but. I'm figuring if you guys want to try it out for free and then switch to the page, you can get a free month there if you choose their basic plan. So, Wow, that is a good deal. So people can sign up through like your affiliate link and get $50 off? Yeah, if they're $50 credit towards their paid plan. So if the paid plan for the basic is $50 and then if they sign up for the professional, which costs 100 then they would get $50, $50 off for their first month. Wow, that's awesome! So, so if you check that out, if you're gonna do it, it yeah. if you're gonna do it anyways, you know. Yeah, seriously, just ask Matt about that. Um, I'm sure he'll give you that deal, even if if you don't sign up for our course. Uh, we had a qu quick question about ConvertKit about a course. If I teach a course from Rick, and actually, I did post a course, um, or we launched a course recently, De Dennis Smith and I, about using ConvertKit because he's the one that got me on to convert kit so you, i'm going to just post the link to that course as well if people are in the course buying mood you can check out that convert kit all these courses you know you get the 30-day money back guarantee as well um, teachable does have affiliates so you can set up an affiliate account for your own site so you can actually um, have people promote your courses and set it up uh, so they, they get a certain percentage of the revenue. I think you have to be in the professional plan to do that though, which is I think 99 bucks a month. Um, and in terms of promoting Teachable, I'm sure there is a affiliate program. I haven't set it up yet, um, but I should talk to them because maybe I could get you guys $50 off a Teachable plan too. <laughs> uh, let's go, let's see if there, what the next questions were. Um, we got Fuji Love asking, do you suggest selling courses as standalone downloads or going with a membership site model? Matt, you have a, a opinion? Maybe there's a combination. That's kind of what I'm doing, but you got... Yeah, I, I absolutely think you should have a combination. So if you go to my site, courses.skillhance.com, you can... I posted a link up above. You can see the business model that I'm doing. So every individual business uh, course that I have is $15. Every I have course bundles that has three or four courses for twenty nine dollars. So they're getting a discount instead of paying for three dollars. If they sorry, if they paid for three individual courses, it would add up to be forty five dollars. Instead, they can get a course bundle for twenty nine and then they could have a monthly subscription to all of my content on Skillhance. So I think giving them around three options where they can compare. So it's not. So you're creating your own marketplace, right? So when they go on to Skillhance, for instance, they don't even have to compare what's on to Udemy. So, hey, Udemy is selling their courses for uh, 20 to $50. Um, and Skillhance is doing $15 per course and they have bundles. The student now wouldn't necessarily be compared. If I only had one option, they wouldn't be comparing me to other marketplaces. But now that I have three options on Skillhance, they can either get all of my content for 10 a month, comparing that to buying one course for 15 or buying three courses in a bundle for $29. They're comparing now all of my skill hands offerings instead of the marketplace and the internet as a whole. So I, that's why I offer uh, three different things so they can compare it to that. 
That's awesome. And um, I, yeah, I think for me, for the subscription model versus standalone courses, I think doing both is good just because um, for me, I want to give that option to someone to sign up for the subscription and get access to those those courses. Um, I found that some people are more willing to do the subscription to get access to a bunch of courses than just purchasing the standalone uh, courses. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an insider tip that has helped me make some higher price sales in the recent past. And I'm only doing this because so many people have gotten in the course and it's one of the things I talk about in the course. But we got a couple new people who signed up for the course. So I just want to thank Coco and Rick uh, for signing up for the course. Uh, we really appreciate that. But one thing that you can do with Teachable and you can probably do with Thinkific too is when someone purchases a course, you can have them sent to a custom thank you page. So typically someone purchases a course or signs up for a free course and they'll get taken to a page that just says, thanks for enrolling, click here to watch this course. You can customize a page and that's what I've done where I send my traffic if anyone signs up for a free course, for example, I send them to a page that says, hey, thanks for signing for this course. Did you know that you can get this course plus 10 other courses in my bundle package? And if they want to buy that bundle package right then and there, they can get that bundle for $99. And so I have for my bundles, I have the subscription method of $9 a month, but I also have the option for people to buy it for a one-time fee of $99. And what's cool about that is that people, I, I'm guessing that most people won't stay on the subscription for longer than like 10 months. So if they purchase that $99 price, I feel like I'm getting a deal because they're probably gonna, I'm gonna get more revenue from them than if they did the $90 a month thing. And as soon as they sign up for that free course or a pay course, they see how much value they could be getting by just spending an extra $75, for example. Because if you sign up for a $25 course, you get taken to a thank you page that says, hey, did you know there's 10 other photography courses in this bundle? And you can normally get it for $99, but since you already bought this one course, you can get it for $75 today. And I've gotten a lot of people signing up for that, that bundle because of that upsell that is taking someone directly to that thank you page rather than the custom teachable thank you page or the the original thank you page so that's something i would do set up your thank you pages and do the upsell because when someone signs up for the course they're hot they're interested they you made that proposal and they accepted that proposal so it's just a little bit more work to get them to buy another course or to buy a bundle of courses and that I've just had a lot of success with that. So I don't know if uh, Thinkific has that custom thank you page option. Uh, do you know, Matt? Yeah. yeah, you can customize your welcome page. Uh, to answer Andy's question, I don't know if you can embed a video on the thank you page. I I think you can. I just haven't, I didn't even think about that, to be honest with you. I usually just legitimately thank you, uh, offer them a thank you and a welcome and, and things like that. And uh, saying that they have, um lifetime access to the course like giving them the course link their username their password you can definitely offer them a one-time offer on that uh welcome uh email and uh once phil answers it too i can double check that for you on thinkific if you can embed a video you can you can uh customize the when a student completes a course you can customize their email to them you can customize weekly emails so that they can stay engaged in your course if they haven't you know if they've only watched like 25 percent to a certain point you can give them an email for that weekly i don't tend to do that i just do a uh, a welcome and then a completion one where they can leave a review and um you can customize those as well as um whenever you want to email one of your students you can just do that right from thinkific and segment your audience yeah. And with Teachable, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that you can add a video to the thank you page. You can add videos and every or photos and text and everything like that. So that's a perfect place to have like an upsell video that introduces them to that 
course they just signed up for and tries to upsell them on another topic or another course. Uh, we got about five minutes left uh, to keep this webinar at an hour and a half. And so I'm just going to try to breeze through some of these questions so that we can get to all of them. Uh, we had a question about, uh, do you price your self-hosted teachable courses the same price as your Udemy courses? I think all of mine should be the same as on Udemy. I'm, I don't want people to go on my site and see a difference on Udemy because that would, I think, just hurt my brand. I want people to trust me. I want people to trust my site. If it was more expensive, I would have to give a reason. That's one thing that you might consider doing, though, if you do want to charge a little bit higher than what you can on Udemy, adding more to it. So adding um, some maybe extra PDFs, maybe you give them some group coaching or a one-on-one, -on -one, like 20 minutes to get them started with whatever you're teaching, something like that to make the price worth it. But right now, my prices are the same as on Udemy. Uh, we got a question about the difference between the free and paid uh, uh, tiers on Teachable. And I think for everyone, you can go to teachable.com or thinkific.com and just see what the different tiers are. But really the basic differences are one with transaction fees. So when you have a free course, you have you, you have to pay Teachable 10% of every sale plus $1. So if you have a course that sells for $100, you'd have to pay Teachable $11. And then with the paid basic course, you only have to pay 5%. So you would only have to pay $5. So if you're making a decent amount of money, then, and you can do the math, but you can kind of figure out if you're making a few hundred dollars, it's probably worth it to have the basic paid plan on Teachable. Um, and then as you go up to the professional plan, there's actually no transaction costs up to your first $5,000 per month in revenue. And there's just other, um, features with Teachable, you actually don't get one-on-one -on -one email support with the free plan, which is kind of a bummer. You can get responses on the Facebook group, but with the any of the paid plans, you can. The other thing that I do have to mention, so you guys aren't surprised, is that if you do use ConvertKit to, and you try to hook it up with Teachable, you have to sign up for the basic plan to connect it with ConvertKit. You can't connect it with the free plan, which is kind of a bummer, but I just found it was worth it. I was I was worried about it at first. I was worried about paying for ConvertKit and Teachable, but as soon as I set up this sequence and the system that we talked about today, it's paid itself tenfold every month, basically, um, since then. I mean, not tenfold, but it's paid itself uh, for itself um, easily, so... And the reason to pay for either Teachable or Thinkific would be to, on the URL to get their name out of there and just make yeah. it your courses dot your website name. And even at the start, like I had, um, I, I mean, obviously no sales because I didn't have a website yet. So I just didn't want Thinkific in the name. So I made it courses.skillhands.com. And that's that was my one and only reason to pay $49 a month. And it's it's forty nine dollars a month isn't going to break break the bank for me and put me out of business. So, yeah, I think that's much better than having the Teachable or Thinkific branding on your website. Yeah, that's, it makes it so much easier. That's the point. You want to have this as your standalone branded course site, so you want to have that that URL. Uh, let's see more questions. I'm just scrolling up here. Someone did ask later on um, what the average length of a course or module is i think that was one of the questions matt do you have a so i mean basically if you're talking lectures i usually just keep it kind of around uh five minutes each but i mean it could be anywhere between two and 20 minutes i think i think the main point is if you get to the point quickly if you dive deep enough into the subject that you're talking about i wouldn't necessarily care too much about length if it's good content that's all that matters yeah totally and I, it just depends on the course like for example it, with some of my video editing or motion graphics courses it takes a while to recreate a graphic and show how to do it using after effects so it might take 10 15 minutes per lecture and i might have five or ten lectures in a module but then there's other courses like email marketing where i don't want to 
ramble on and on about a topic because you really just want to get to the point. So um, that's a hard question to answer because it really depends on your specific topic. But in terms of a lesson, I would say on average, like between that four and seven minutes is a good good length for a typical lecture, unless you're doing something like a creative project where someone's like following with you, following along with you as you teach them how to do something intricately. And so there's some lessons in our course about Thinkific and Teachable where we're walking you through the steps of uploading course content that are going to be a bit longer, but the lectures about email marketing or using YouTube or sales funnels are going to be a lot shor shorter. We had a question about drip content. Someone asked, uh, Fuji loved asked about, should they use drip content so that everyone, so they're asking so that everyone starts from scratch whenever they sign up. So whenever anyone starts from, signs up for your course, they're always gonna start from scratch in the sense that they have whatever content is available to them. But you can use drip, the drip feature with Teachable and Thinkific to say release, a bunch of lectures every week or every couple days so that they do have to walk through that. I think this can work if your course is very much based off of a weekly schedule, but for classes that are more just standalone, I'm a, more of a fan of just putting it up there for the person and just letting them go through it themselves. I do have like one class, which is a business boot camp which is good for freelancers and it walks through different things that you should do every week for seven weeks. Uh, so that would be a good time to do the drip content. But in general, I'm a fan of just putting everything out there. Phil, the, the question st stem from because they were, I was talking about the monthly membership where they get um, access to all of my content for $10 a month. And they were afraid of the student going in, watching all of their content uh, during that month and then just canceling it. Ah, got it. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that is actually an interesting uh, idea to do drip content for the monthly membership. Um, and I think that's an option that you can do that. Um, are there any more questions? I know some got passed up. So if you want to post, we've gone over five minutes. So I just want to thank everyone that has purchased the course so far and for everyone being here today. Uh, we really appreciate it. We hope that this information has been good for you. Um, I just want to, again, thank Coco, Rick, Ellis, Lynn, Franchi, Verdaluz, Carol, On Demand, Language, John, and Andy for signing up for the course. We really appreciate it. That's awesome. Um, and we hope that this course is worth it for you. Of course, you can ask any other questions you have on Udemy. So you can ask those questions in the Udemy Q&A tab. Um, but I think that's going to be it for now. Matt, you have any final thoughts before I wrap it up? I'm just really happy that you guys uh, came. And I hope that you benefited a lot from this. And thank you to the people that Phil names uh, buying the course. I can't wait to connect with you within the course to um, you know, see how you guys are doing, answer any questions, because we're in this together. We can always improve and we can always learn from each other too. So I'm, I'm just excited to get to work with you guys. Great. Yeah, I'm so excited too. And for anyone who's watching this in the future, you can still go to the videoschoolonline.com slash self host now link. It's going to be a higher price though, because we wanted to give everyone who was here live with us a special deal for being live with us today. So keep your ears out for future uh, webinars that we provide. Matt, just one more time, people can find you at, where can people find you? Skillhance.com. I don't know if I say skill hands, but it's skill hands, like enhance your skills. <laughs> skill. You need to get the skill hands URL though and direct people to <laughs> skillhands.com. <laughs> And Andy, I don't know if Andy joked about that one time, but I, I, I hope I hope he was just kidding because Andy, were you kidding that one time? Because I, I have to watch my pronunciation now. Yeah, <laughs> you just need maybe it was a different Andy. I don't know. You just need to get the skill hands URL. And if you don't forward it to skillhands.com, you got to use it for some sort of 
handy skills, maybe a massage therapy course that you create or something. <laughs> Anyways, you can find me at videoschoolonline.com. Everything is Video School Online on Facebook, YouTube, and follow my journey with teaching online courses. I'm sure going to be updating you uh, with all kinds of things in my journey in the future. And again, thanks for joining the course. Thanks for being with us. And we'll see you in the future. Bye, guys. Have a good, good day and a good rest of the week. Thank you.